All right, we're live. So, uh, hey everyone, and uh, welcome to today's podcast I, or webinar, rather. I'm joined by uh, Simon and Terry from Blue Tractor Group, and uh, we have uh, some interesting topics to, to discuss today. Uh, just as a sort of intro message and housekeeping point, um, if anyone has any questions over the course of the webinar, um, you can post them in the question box below. Uh, it could be, it should be on your screen. Um, additionally, if, if um, you need the recording afterwards to, to look at it, we'll distribute that with uh, everyone on the line as well, or everyone who's registered. So um, the, the topic for this webinar is uh, how to protect your proprietary index ETF strategy. And we're really hosting this webinar to discuss primarily the, the semi-transparent ETF structure and how this ties into our expertise in offering custom indexing solutions to, to our clients. So our, our clients and partners generally work with us to turn their cutting edge investment strategies into custom indices. And the goal is often to convert those into an ETF uh, structure or a direct indexing product or any other wrapper. The major concern, however, is um, that comes up in, in a lot of our conversations is, is the issue of transparency and what this means around in terms of safeguarding your strategy and safeguarding your strategy's performance over time. As you, as yeah, many of you probably know, publishing the daily holdings of a strategy, which is the, the case in a transparent ETF, this may lead to issues around free riding, front running, or even replication or a sort of back calculation of your underlying strategy. So semi-transparency offers a solution to this, which Simon and Terry will tell you about shortly. But uh, in general, over the course of this webinar, we'll cover the core issues around transparency, how the semi-transparent structure works, how it can be utilized to mitigate some of these issues I just mentioned. And uh, yeah, I hope this webinar is valuable for anyone who is looking to construct new index products or enter the ETF space. So um, I'll just give a quick introduction to myself and Index One, and I'll hand it over to Simon and Perry afterwards to, to do their respective intros. So I, I'm Alex, and I, I'm the uh, CEO of Index One. And what we offer is essentially a custom indexing platform so it's a calculation solution which helps you design, back test, and run live calculation of various custom index strategies. Uh, on top of that, we also have various index dissemination options, uh, ways to integrate your index with third-party platforms. And this really sort of helps our clients either launch uh, index limited products or produce indices for tracking purposes or research. Uh, there are many different types of use cases that, that we cover. But uh, let me hand it over to Simon to give a quick intro to, to himself. Thanks, Alex, for having Terry and I on today. Delighted to be here. And it's, it's, it's a very interesting and uh, interesting topic we're going to talk about today. Uh, Blue Tractor, we're based in New York City. I'm the co-founder along with Terry. Uh, we have an SEC-approved uh, ETF wrapper technology, commonly referred to as semi or non-transparent in the U.S. market context. Um, it currently powers ETFs on various U.S. listing exchanges. And delighted to be here. I'm looking forward to the to digging in to today, uh, today's topic. Hi. Once again, thanks, Alex, for having myself and Simon uh, alongside yourself today. I just add a little bit more flavor to Blue Tractor. As Simon said, we are uh, one of the licensed or one of the uh, companies who received exemptive relief for what's termed a semi transparent ETF. But besides that, Blue Tractor is recognized for bringing innovation to the market, 
to push the boundaries of ET the ETF space back to allow investors and managers greater choice, not just in the US, but in other jurisdictions around the world. Uh, and that's our focus. Excellent. Makes sense. So the first topic I want to cover is, is just firstly around the sort of traditional transparent index ETF. So what, what are, Simon, the main concerns uh, an investment manager needs to consider as it comes to uh, running a transparent index? Policy? Yeah, sure. Let me provide some context and background and then we can kind of together sort of work towards the, the issues of concern that investment managers might think about. So today we're talking about, you know, passive or index-based investing because often I mean, some of you, some of you on the on the call today might be thinking, well, semi-transparent isn't that focused on active management, you know, active stock picking? And yes, it, it certainly it certainly is. But today we're focused on the passive or index space, and you know, that really is the largest part of the ETF market, as many of you know. I mean, think of SPY that tracks the S and P 500 or the QQQ family of ETFs that are focused on Nasdaq, all all the MSCI. Uh, FTSE, et cetera, whether they're broad-based or narrow sector-specific ETFs, they're tracking an index that's, that has been developed by third-party providers, and they typically ask the managers to launch ETFs, license these products. And, you know, anybody on today's call can do that. They can go out and license any one of these, you know, well-known indices and, you know, become one of many doing basically the same thing. So really what we're talking about today is what Index One facilitates, which is customer bespoke index construction. So basically as an asset manager, you've selected or decided that you can, you can um, get a slice of the market that you think provides you an edge or a return, an attractive return profile that doesn't exist currently out there in ETF land. So you're trying to develop something that you, you, you spend years of your research, your effort, back testing, et cetera, and you put together this, this, this product or this index now, and, and you go, well, how can I protect my IP? If I just published it, then everybody else on the planet can do the same thing, and all my work has, has been for naught. That's, that's what we'll focus on, and Alex, I know you're going to come back in a few minutes with some of the main concerns about that kind of transparency on an index. But let me just first set the table on how the ETF market works. Now, if you launch a fully transparent ETF, you know, there's no requirement for you to publish your index. There's no requirement to publish the composition or the specific rules of the index. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's great. Uh, Simon, you know, you just said I'm going to be transparent, but I, if I don't have to publish my index, how can anybody know what I'm doing? Well, the devil's in the details because under the rules by the SEC and the CBI, being transparent means you actually have to publish every day the actual portfolio of the ETF. So if the ETF is tracking the index, even though the index itself is not published, ironically, you're publishing the exact portfolio, so therefore your index is, is being exposed. So that's the sort of subtle detail that, so that, some, that some folks don't appreciate when they launch a transparent ETF. Now, because you're fully transparent via the published portfolio, you're now exposed to nefarious third parties that can look at your you look at your portfolio and say, okay, well, there's the index. Now I'm able to do certain things with that index that Alex, I think you'll talk about right now that uh, are to the detriment of the asset manager. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in relation to what you said around uh, not just discovering active strategies, but also any custom index, you know, I think that's very almost a more important factor as it comes to custom systematic indices because sort of once once the methodology is out it's out you you can't sort of undo that exactly. whereas for uh, active discretionary you will make picks over time and uh those will obviously then change depending on your process but uh yeah well, i mean one one of the major issues is is around uh front running uh and that's actually something we've we've uh, done a bit of internal research on and published a paper as well, which we can 
we can uh, send to anyone who's who's interested. But uh, we've we've basically covered the major index, uh, major ETFs, and uh, looked at how much fund running occurs at the index rebalance. So basically, in between the announcement of index changes and the effective date of such changes. And we, we came up with a figure of around seven basis points per year for the major uh, ETFs. And that's a really significant number considering considering the size of that market. Um, you know, by rough calculation, it's just over 10 billion a year as a cost. Uh, and that's, you know, nothing to uh, scoff at. It's definitely a big number. And ultimately, it's it's a drag for, for the ETF issuer, but also for the end investor who mm -hmm. has to deal with worse Absolutely. performance. Alex, you know, you mentioned that paper, the U uh, Index 1 uh, undertook on the cost of front running. And, uh, you know, that was reinforced by a research paper that came out of the University of Illinois, Chicago. And they estimated the cost of front running to these index rebalancing at 9.7 basis points, significant costs. Now, the semi-transparent ETF structure won't really add value, but it will protect the value. That 9.7 basis points, that's what you'll be protecting. But let me sort of go back a little bit what I said there. And what is a semi-transparent ETF to begin with? It's an ETF, just like any other ETF. It provides lower costs, and it's as efficient tax-wise as any fully transparent ETF. So there's no difference in terms of cost or tax efficiency. In terms of the end user, purchasing and selling their ETF share, absolutely no difference. They won't know whether you're, the issuer or the index provider is using a blue tractor semi-transparent ETF or a fully transparent ETF. Where the difference is, is the licensee, the index provider. They can, as Simon said, go with a fully transparent ETF under Rule 6C11. And, you know, there's some disadvantages of that that Simon's already highlighted. But another disadvantage of that is the fact that if your assets under management grow or, you know, people think, wow, this is a really good index. I want to replicate that. You can't change. You can't come into the semi tree. You can't turn the opacity level up to stop those guys doing that. So you're, you're tied to that mast with a semi-transparent ETF, you have the flexibility to run essentially as a fully transparent ETF every day. But when you're rebalancing or whenever you like, you can turn the opacity level up to throw off front, front runners, throw off freeloaders, stop copycat funds, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll come back to what I mean on these things, but the, semi-transparent etf structure that blue tractor offers is unique because it offers this flexible transparency option at the same time safeguarding shareholder wealth from front running and protecting the intellectual property of the licensee oh sorry the index provider now while it's doing that it also provides enough information every day to the capital markets, which is essential for tight pricing in all market conditions. So it really is the novel premier structure that's out there because no other structure can compete with this. And that's what anyone looking to bring their own index strategy via index one to the market in a semi-transparent ETF structure provided by Blue Tractor, they're the benefits you, 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 you receive by going that route. That's right. It's interesting if I can just add some color as well. I know uh, I've been talking to some folks here in New York about the you know the arbitrage and the and the index front running market. There's there's whole groups of hedge funds and 
you know, investment banks that have trading desks, typically called program trading or index rebalancing desks, that that's what they do. They they try and figure out and front run all day these broad based index, you know, Russell, you know, S and P, Dow, FTSE, whatever. I know there's a group uh, out of Millennium, one of the bigger premier hedge funds in the U.S. that has a whole team down in Puerto Rico. That's all they do, and they make a lot of money doing this. So it exists. It's for real. You, you can't dismiss it, and uh, it's just a fact of the marketplace of your predatory third parties taking advantage of market inefficiencies. Um, Terry, let, let me just describe a bit of color about the the market. You know. We call it semi-transparent. Here in the U.S., that's what it is. It's a semi-transparent market that the SEC has decided exists and they, re and they regulate. It's interesting. In other jurisdictions around the world, there is no such thing. Uh, they're just called ETFs with delayed portfolio disclosure, meaning that they, in lieu of full daily transparency of the ETF portfolio, you put up a different kind of basket that uh, allows you to not disclose your portfolio. So really, it already exists elsewhere. It's just in the U.S. where we have this kind of hang up on the term semi-transparent, which is which I find kind of interesting. You know, people think the U.S. the U.S. is the land of the free, but often we have more regulation here than anywhere else. Ironically, um, just for some numbers, uh, the first semi-transparency in the U.S. launched in winter 2020, just after the COVID lockdown. Um, it's about a seven billion dollar marketplace now, so growing, uh, and we're pretty excited to see. It's about fifty five ETFs now that have launched, so certainly it has its niche, it has its place, and we expect this to continue uh, going forward. Hmm. Thanks, guys. Yeah, just just to um, kind of for anyone who's who's listening who might not be as familiar with with the wrapper, could you just explain? On we don't have to go into the exact details uh, around it but on a high level how how the wrapper actually works uh, okay. in terms of the well, disclosure okay. Okay. on a fully transparent etf simon mentioned the you know the portfolio has to be disclosed every day that portfolio is disclosed via something called the creation unit and that's what the capital markets group use to price hedge and arbitrage every etf has to publish this basket, this creation unit, and that's what it's used for. With the blue tractor structure and these other semi-transparent structures, you don't have to disclose the full portfolio every day. Okay, in the blue, in blue tractors instance, we have all the names of the securities in the basket, which is fundamental, we believe, for you know risk control type pricing, etc etc but the way we hide your ip and protect against freeloading front running is we scramble the weightings every day so apple may be in your portfolio or your index at three percent what the market will see on say today would be apple at two percent tomorrow it might be 2.5 next day it might be 4.5 it bounces around so no one actually knows the exact weight of Apple in your portfolio. Now, when it comes to someone freeloading, and then what do we mean by freeloading? They're actually copying your strategy. And it's a well-known you know, process in the market. We have you know, a, a one that's recently been announced. BlackRock and Goldman's, two of the biggest companies out there, are copycatting, freeloading. JP Morgan's equity premium income ETF. There's a real example for you. So don't think we're just saying this This is theory. These things happen in practice. And that's one example, but they're numerous. And what that actually means is every dollar that goes into their copycat, their freeloading fund, is not coming to you. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit your p &L. So that's why you want to protect against freeloading. And Blue Tractor, because we jumble the weights every day in a random way, that stops freeloading because if anyone tries to copy the basket or the portfolio that we publish every day, transaction costs of keep buying and selling will kill them. Okay, so their returns are going to be way, way, way off what yours are. Okay, now in terms of front running, again, we've seen the costs 
from Alex and I've mentioned it from the University of Illinois. Simon mentioned these, these groups in most of the major houses. Again, it's real. And that's to the detriment of your returns and your shareholder returns. So, you know, that aside, if, you know, if you're publishing your portfolio every day, people in other countries, other jurisdictions, not in the same contemporaneous time zone as you, can get ahead of you again, drying up the liquidity of some of your securities in your index, making it more costly. And a, a classic example of that is the ARK K ETF, very popular in the US, but now is uh, listed on J the Japanese markets. So non contemporaneous time zones. Once the basket's published in the US, the guys in Japan can see what's going on. They can buy and sell before the US market opens again, drying up liquidity. So these are real practical consequences of going fully transparent under 6C11, as opposed to coming into the semi-transparent world and using something like the Blue Tractor Shielded Alpha ETF wrapper. Thanks. Yeah, that, I think that makes makes a lot of sense and uh, appreciate the thorough explanation. So <clears throat> the, the wrapper has been, been around now for a while and uh, there's certainly some talk about it. I mean, what, what would you say are the main things that are misunderstood or misconceptions about the transparent ETF structure? Sure. I mean, Terry, let me start this and then you can jump in with some more details. I mean, you know, one hears Alex from the pundits and, I, and by that I mean the ETF press and and, and the like here in the U.S. and, and elsewhere, you know, that these these products, semi-transparent ETFs, don't aren't, aren't, aren't as tax efficient as a fully transparent ETF. That That's the first big one you hear. Uh, the second one you hear about is that these things don't trade as well, especially in high volatility, because the capital markets, the market makers, et cetera, don't have full visibility under the hood. So how can they possibly trade these ETFs as efficiently as a fully transparent ETF where they know the exact portfolio and the exact weightings? Like those are the two, those are like the two big ones you hear about all the time in the press. And I mean, it's just, to be honest, it's nonsense. It's true that when, going back to the tax efficiency, it's true that when these products first were approved by the SEC in the US in late 2019, none of them, including Blue Tractor, had what's called custom basket relief. These are special purpose uh, uh, portfolio baskets that the capital markets use to uh, conduct what's called in-kind transactions to mitigate capital gains when the fund rebalances their ETF. So it's true initially, I would agree that there was perhaps some tax inefficiency versus fully transparent where those things exist, but that's changed. I mean, Blue, at Blue Tractor, we received our custom basket relief in 2021. So today, ETFs that use Blue Tractor are as tax efficient as a fully transparent ETF. There's no other way to slice and dice that. It, it's just a fact. Uh, number two, the idea that these things don't trade as well, the market makers, and when I say market makers, firms like Citadel, Jane Street, Susquehanna, GTS, RBC, Virtue, you know, et cetera, et cetera, can't handle these ETFs is, again, nonsense. First of all, these are super sophisticated trading firms. But B, the information in these baskets that are published in lieu of full transparency are highly correlated to the actual portfolio and have low tracking error. So therefore, market makers understand their risks and therefore hedge their risks and therefore can conduct efficient prices. And when I say that, I mean tight bid offers, uh, arbitrage to keep discounts between the market price and the, and the NAV of the fund, super low, et cetera, et cetera. And we've seen, you know, I'm not, not going to call them black swan, but we've seen some pretty disruptive things happen the last 24 months. Vladimir Putin marches into Ukraine. Uh, the Fed continues to rise to raise rates, not just here in the U.S., but globally, causing sort of economic shocks. 
despite all those things happening, spreads have been super, super tight in the transparent in the semi-transparent space, in some cases even tighter than fully transparent. So again, these are just myths that I wish the, the press would stop writing about and move on. Uh, Terry, any other thoughts? Yeah, I'll just add one further thought to that. And that is the myth that you can't grow assets in a semi-transparent ETF wrapper. Mm. Once again, I'll give you an example. The last blue tractor licensee, Summit Global Investments out of Utah, launched their uh, fund of funds ETF using the blue tractor semi-transparent ETF back in March this year. They launched it with $2 million to die it sits at over $105 million. So once again, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. You can grow assets in a semi-transparent ETF wrapper. But, you know, you've got to bring something to the market. If you're just going to launch another index that's going to track the S&P 500, you're not going to grow assets because they're already out there. You've got to be novel, innovative. And that's where, you know, the guys at Index One can help, you you know, bring your novel index strategy to market. Yeah, that's a great point, Terry, because, you know, if, if someone has a good idea out there and wants to, you know, develop a, a, an index product that captures a slice of the market that gives them an edge, they think, and that's, as you say, that's what Alex's team can do for them, um, it's, it, you know, Put on the put on the you know now the, the mindset of the investor, you know they're exp they're approached by their advisor to say hey you know or, or they see something on TV or whatever about this ETF. At that point, they're thinking that's an interesting market opportunity. That's an interesting pot potential for return. That's an that's an interesting management group. I like what they what they've done in the past. None of them think, hey, is this semi transparent or transparent? No one does. No investor thinks that way. All they care about is what's the strategy, what's the team behind it, and can I make money? That's the end of the at the end of the day. That's all that matters to investors. None of them care whether it's semi-transparent or transparent. So how you get there with your ETF wrapper is irrelevant to the investor. All they care about are the, are the other things I mentioned. Yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So. <clears throat> Just like looking forward in, in the um, semi-transparent space, what are the kind of main developments you're expecting or hoping to see in uh, over you know next year and, and beyond? Well, uh, as I said right at the start of this podcast, Blue Tractor is recognised as being innovative in the ETF space, and at the moment. The licensees that we can uh, offer a, a wrapper to really comprise of any, you know, U.S. manager with long only domestic equities, Canadian, Brazil, Mexico. For the last 18 months, two years, we've been in intense dialogue with the investment management division at the SEC to try and expand that to actually bring in short positions as well okay and we're the we're, we're the ones pushing that boundary as best we can to get that um, that relief obviously we want to expand the market even further because uh, when i say the market i mean the type of active products that we can license to because at the moment we're restricted to us domestic equities canada brazil mexico we can't bring into our framework anyone who's got international equities, i.e. Japanese equities, Canadian, uh, sorry, Australian, and anyone who's got fixed income or uses options for wealth protection. So we're pushing forward the boundary as best we can to bring short positions into the framework. And we're also then going to try and bring, you know, an expandable universe, bring in fixed income instruments, bring in, international equities bringing options because you know the blue tractor structure actually is well suited for all those okay so it will give investors more choice it will give managers more choice as well 
And if the market doesn't want these things, they won't, they won't take them up. And we don't believe it's for the regulators to make that decision. We believe it's for the market to make that decision. Exactly, Terry. Exactly. I, you know, as I mentioned before, the word semi-transparent exists only in the context of the U.S. I mean, you look at Canada, you look at Australia and other markets where they have products that, that don't disclose their portfolios every day. They're often called portfolio delayed ETFs, uh, a.k.a. semi-transparent, really, at the end of the day. And none of those markets preclude their ETFs from, from investing only in their domestic equity market. So I echo Terry's sentiment that uh, let's, let, let's not have the regulators decide what the market wants. Let, let the market decide on their own based on a full menu of choices. And that's what I would heavily encourage. And we'll, you know, 2024 will be an interesting year, Alec, because here in the U.S. we have a, a major election coming up, as, as we all know, and we'll see what happens. Often in these elections, uh, there's a lot of changing uh, chairs, revolving chairs, moving chairs in terms of the Washington uh, bodies, such as the Securities and Exchange Commission. So we'll see who sort of comes in and takes on the job going forward and whether he or she is more inclined to permit uh, more innovation in the marketplace. The other thing in 2024, we're going to continue to see this incredible symbiosis between ETF service providers and investment managers that are new to the marketplace. It used to be, Alex, in, in our market that to launch an ETF was an onerous, expensive, time-consuming activity uh, that could take you months and months and months and a lot of legal bills just to get over the finish line. It's all been streamlined now, as, as it is now in, in a lot of jurisdictions, you know, Europe especially as well. And, you know, folks can launch their ETF in as little as, you know, 190 to 120 days for as little as seventy-five dollars to $100,000 because it's a network of providers such as the Index One that can do a piece of the puzzle for them. So in your case, you can develop their index. They can then take that index and go to, a, say, a white label firm and package that up into an ETF st uh, structure with a trust, a board, um, accounting, back office, et cetera, et cetera. Then they can use Blue Tractor to, to provide the wrapper technology to hide their intellectual property. So you can see that if you are a sort of an individual that has a good idea, a small firm, you don't need to do this yourself. For, you know, you can work with a bunch of a constellation of providers to get you to the market fast and efficiently and at relatively low cost. So all, those are all the exciting things in 2024 that, you know, I also think that underpin this whole growing space of custom bespoke indices that, you know, you don't need to do it all by yourself. Uh, there's a lot of folks here to help you. Yeah, I think an, a, a lay way of putting what you've described there so succinctly, Simon, is this. ET, the, you know, ETF, you know the F. Other people will do the E and the T for you. You don't need to concern yourself about it. Excellent. And that, you know, right. Yeah, that's the best way to describe it in lay terms. Very good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's a good, good, good explanation. I mean, yeah, one, one thing I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to and hoping for is, is you know, further development on, on the uh, launch front uh, in terms of cost, uh, I think, is, is one main thing holding back a lot of, you know, really great investment strategies or potential products from entering entering the market and, and uh, finding investors and obviously the time to launch as well is hopefully something that can be be uh, reduced further but um, I mean just to kind of wrap things up or, or to to uh, give some clarity on you know why why we're here you know with this collaboration with with blue tractor um, I think it's a really great great uh, collaboration first of all and it it really helps sort of bring things together for anyone looking to enter the market uh, from sort of the early uh, design phase of, of an investment strategy uh, to building the index building the back history running the live calculation and ultimately also safeguarding that. So making sure 
um, it stays away from Frontrunner is another other uh, firms who might try to uh, exploit or copycat that strategy. So really excited to uh, yeah, bring bring this forward and uh, find more more use cases for this. Excellent. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of yeah, I think we can pretty much wrap it up there. We we've already passed the thirty minute mark, but wow. Okay. If um, you know Simon and Harry, could you just let let any viewers know how to get in touch with you uh, for if anyone's interested? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, just 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 to set well, bluetractorgroup.com is the website URL, um, and please email me at Simon at bluetractorgroup.com. Again, Simon at bluetractorgroup.com. And we'll be happy to have an uh, exploratory discussion. Obviously, uh, same thing on your end, Alex. Uh, I guess you'll give your your contact information as well. Yeah, yeah. So for for us, um, index1.io is is our website, and you can get in touch at contact at index1.io. Um, all right. Well, that I think wraps it up. So I'm gonna end the stream here. But thanks everyone who's tuned in and. Thanks, Simon and Terry, of course, for taking the time to um, speak today. Our Thanks, pleasure. Alex. Thanks for having us. We'll talk to you soon again. Thanks. Bye, everybody.